voters go to the polls today in several states and it could be a referendum on Congress and President Obama's policies, especially government spending and the growing national debt. Let's talk it over with our panel. Mary Catherine Hamm, staff writer at the Weekly Standard and Fox News contributor. Joe Trippi, Democratic strategist, Romanoff campaign. And Tamara Holder, Chicago-based Democratic strategist. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. All right, uh, Mary Catherine, or Ham, as she is known <laughs> to many of her friends. Thank you. Um, how big is the debt? Oh, how big how is, big it? is I, the I debt cannot actually when it comes to the agenda for I, I Republicans? It's big enough that regular Americans actually are thinking about it and connecting it with the current economy. I think that's the shift that you've seen, is that regular voters and activists are saying, huh, these two are linked. I don't want to end up like Greece. And there's actually a point where you have to stop spending and fixing this problem. And I think that's something that's coming out. Does that mean Republicans are going to win all those people? No, they have to do some work on that. Um, but. I think that's what you're seeing the shift. But Joe, if if people are starting to put the numbers together and like, wow, that is a really big number, the conventional wisdom would be that's not good for Democrats. Uh, it's not good for anybody right now. I mean, people are really upset with both parties. Uh, uh, through the Bush administration, they thought that Republicans weren't conservative on the spending that mm -hmm. they should have been, and that's what why the Tea Party started in a lot of sure. a lot of reasons. So I think you're seeing this angst on both sides. It's creating real primaries, particularly on the Republican side of the aisle between between uh, establishment Republicans who let the spending happen uh, during those years and, and Tea Party uh, folks who wanted to stop the spending right now. But the other thing is you're starting to see this across the board, across ideology. I agree, the American people are starting to understand we can't keep. Spending spending this way, so you're seeing independents, Republicans, Democrats, all start, I mean, there's really a sense that a third party that said sure. stop spending now would, yeah. would do well. Well, I think that the reason why we can't keep spending this way is because nobody has the money to spend it. You know, the, the we're jobs spending we, it anyway. But, but but people at home, I mean, the, the national debt to the average person means nothing when they cannot put food on their tables. In the Commerce Department just released numbers yesterday that incomes are falling all across the country. So people don't have money. I'm not worried about my neighbor's house going up in flames when my house is on fire and I can't put food on the table. That's the biggest problem here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think there's actually a way that they're connecting the two with their, their real lives in yeah. a way that voters haven't done in the past. But, you know, Joe was saying about this insurgent versus establishment. Sure. There's Colorado's the perfect yeah. example of that on both sides of the Senate race. All right, and they go to the polls today. All right, the panel sticking around for this. What will Republicans do now? Will they look as clueless as Robert Redford in the movie The Candidate? Remember that? <laughs> Oh, yeah, you totally got elected. Right. Now what, he said to the Apple. All right, Joe, uh, you look back at history over the last 100 years. There have been times where uh, people have tried really hard to get in a, and take control of Congress. Suddenly they have control, and then they go, okay, we got it. Now what? Uh, all these problems are yours. Uh, the, the, exactly what happened when Bush left the White House. All right. the problems became Obama's, and that's going to be the problem. It's easy being the opposition saying, no, we don't want taxes. We don't want this. We don't want that. Okay, great. How are you going to solve the problem? We don't want more spending. What we just talked about in the last segment. Sure. We don't want any more spending. Guess what? It's all it's all in the Republicans' lap now. What are you going to do? Well, Mary Catherine, if the Republicans uh, are swept into power in the House and right. maybe the Senate as well, do they have a big plan? <laughs> I'm not sure they have a cohesive plan. I think there's some ways that they can work on on wooing people and, and talking in a very in a concrete way uh, on government transparency. I think would be something good that they could actually marry with the Obama administration. Maybe actually work together on that, uh, something everybody's almost in favor of. Uh, talk about tax simplification. I think you've hit a, a point where of no return when the Treasury Secretary can't figure out his taxes, even though he has the money and resources to do it. I think that's a Charlie compelling Rangel. argument. Going into, <laughs> you're going into a double dip. What are you going to do? we got deficit. You're going to have to spend your way sure. out of it, or, or you're not. I right. mean, what and are you going to do? But it's also not all on, on the... The, the GOP's plate if Obama's the president too. So you, you've got you're gonna, you're still going to have this head-to-head -head competition sure. and laying blame on other people as as well. Tamara, I call it the illusionist versus the obstructionist, and the the Democratic illusionists need to you know figure out what the pre the plan is, and the obstructionists, the Republicans, need to say this is what our plan is if you are going to vote for us. Because I think right now our pe people are just voting on party lines. They're just if they're Republicans, they're going to vote Republican because they're mad at Obama or whatever. You call but we need to obstructionists, know. but aren't they just opposed to all the spending, so they're going to stop it? 
They're opposed to everything. They're opposed to spending. They're opposed to health care. They're opposed to anything that Obama does. They, I mean, they can't even agree. I mean, again, you have Tea Party and, and the, GO, the establishment GOP, and they can't they agree can't on agree a lot either. of these things. So that's going to be, I think, the big problem, not just in, the, in this election, but if they do take control of the Senate and the House, how do, how do they actually get things done? And it's time think, to stop the slamming and actually let's hear as Americans what our politicians' plans are, because I don't think anybody knows what anybody's values, standards, ideals are. Like, I think I think the opposition to Barack Obama's uh, agenda has actually been more bipartisan than the support for it. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I'm not sure this, I'm not sure that we're to be attacked for that. And, and I think the civil war on the right is actually overplayed a bit when you certainly got it on the on the left this, as this well. This all may be moot because so the pro the split in the Republican Party right now between Tea Party and establishment is such that they're getting in their own way. And Sharon Angle being a, a case in point in Nevada, where Harry Reid may win, we may have the Democrats may win the majority in in the House and the Senate, keep it uh, because not because of so how mm -hmm. strong the party is, but because how fractured the Republican Party is. Interesting right now. stuff. All right, our thanks to Mary Catherine and Joe and Tamara. Thanks for joining us on the Curvy Couch. Good discussion. Thanks. Now watch this. Straight ahead, one very drunk driver.